What is up everybody and welcome back to Johnny K Picks and in this video I'll be going over my full card, picks and predictions along with my bet so far for UFC 279 Chamaya versus Diaz. First things first, please hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet or if you're new to the channel and go ahead and hit those notifications so you don't miss out on any of my new videos or live streams. All right, so UFC Perry was yesterday, and overall, it was a very good card, had a lot of great finishes, had some stinkers, but hey, we all can't be UFC Austin. For my picks, I ended up going 9-3 and three on the night, and for my bets, I had six of them, and I ended up hitting all six of them, winning plus 8.04 units profit. So yeah, nice little bounce back week for me. It feels good to actually be in the green here, and it took me about a little over a year to get this goal that I finally hit all of my bets. So I'm going to say this one more time. I hit all six of my bets last card and I won 8.04 units profit. So like I said, there were a lot of great fights yesterday, but my favorite performances were from Wood, Whitaker, and Gan. So for Wood, I think he fought a very perfect fight. He had very good striking. He had very good cardio. He's got, he had very good power in his hands as well. And I really thought this fight was going to be close. And I was very high on Wood to win this fight. But for me, I think Jordan's takedown defense needs a little bit of work because those trips were very easy that Wood was doing. And that played a big part in that fight, I believe. Not to mention, like I said, Wood landed some very clean shots on Jordan and looked like he was stunned a bit, but didn't go down, no knockout or anything. But very impressed with Wood here. And it looks like that jump up to featherweight was a very good decision for him. And with Whitaker, there is a reason why Whitaker hasn't lost in eight years. And his only two losses were to Izzy because this guy is elite. He's definitely one of the best in the middleweight division. Very good striking, very good speed, very good takedown defense. And it looks like he's actually getting better each and every fight. It just stinks because it just seems like he has that wall. He just can't cross and it's Israel Adesanya. But other than that, he is a very good fighter, very underrated. And I think this guy's amazing and very good fight from him against Vittori. And lastly, with Gan, very good performance again. He did exactly what he needed to do. He almost fought a perfect fight, except Ty did land that one shot that put him down. But other than that, he looked great. He used his range effectively, used his body kicks that were landing on Ty that played a big part in the fight and Ty's durability, and he ended up getting the knockout. So for me, Gon deserves another title shot, whether it's an interim title shot against maybe John Jones or Stipe, whoever wins that fight, or if Naganyu can get, be back in time, I think they need to run back that fight right now because I think that's going to be another banger of a fight. And I think Gon's very impressive and he will be a champion one day. But all right, guys, let's jump right into my picks and predictions for UFC 279. The first fight we have is Darren Weeks versus Yohan Leonesi. Weeks is 5 and 2, 28 years old, 5'11 with a 72 inch reach. And Yohan is 8 and 1. 30 years old, 6'1", with a 76-inch reach. Okay, so to start the night out, we have a pretty interesting fight here. So Weeks is a very solid fighter. He's got good striking. He's very tough, good cardio. But the only knock on him is he doesn't really have that KO power, and he's kind of hittable at times. And with Yoan, I think he's the more dangerous fighter in this matchup, but he's got good striking as well, very good power in his hands. But the knock on him, though, is he's a one, one and a half round fighter, and his cardio tends to fade. So for me, this fight can go one of two ways. It's going to be a Yoan early finish or maybe a week's decision or a late round finish. So I'm going to roll a dice here, and I'm going to go with the underdog at the moment, which is Yoan. I think, like I said, I think he's the more dangerous fighter. He's got more power in his hands. He's going to have the four-inch reach advantage, which I do think will play a big part in this fight, especially early on. And I think he'll be able to get weeks out of there, maybe in the late first or early second round. So with my pick, I'm going to say Yoan wins this one by a knockout. Next fight we have is Elise Reed versus Melissa Martinez. Reed is 5-2, and two, 29 years old, 5-3 with a 63-inch reach. And Martinez is 7-0, 25 years old, 5-2 with a 64-inch reach. 
Okay, so here is the first fight of women's MMA, and man, it is going to be a great one. And if you didn't notice the sarcasm there, I'm sorry, but yeah, this is a low-level women's MMA fight, and Reed is mainly a striker. She's got okay striking, but that's about it. No takedown defense, very low fight IQ. If you go back and watch her fight against Sam Hughes, you will see everything I just said. And Martinez is making her UFC debut, but the red flag on her is she hasn't fought in about two and a half years. So I don't know what she's been doing. She's still young. Maybe she was just training for all this time. And But she does have good striking too. She can take the fight to the mat, but she's mainly a striker. And for me, I am not impressed with Reed. I do not think she should be in the UFC. And I'm going to take a shot with Martinez here. I think she'll be able to outstrike Reed or maybe even get a late round finish because, like I said, just not impressed with Reed whatsoever. And she shouldn't be in the UFC. So with my pick here, I'm going to say Martinez wins by a decision. Moving on up the card, we have Chad and Helliger versus Haley Elatang. And Helliger is 12 and 5, 35 years old, 5'6 with a 64 inch reach. And El Tang is 15, 8 and 2, 30 years old, 5'5 with a 66.5 inch reach. Okay, so both these guys are mainly strikers. I will say though, El Tang does have the striking advantage, I think just barely. He's a little bit more technical, he's got a little bit more power as well. And he can wrestle his opponents too, he's got good takedowns. And I think that's what he should do in this fight is go for the takedowns because Anheliger's takedown defense is only 52%. So with all that being said, I think Elatang is going to win this one. I, I just think he's going to be the better fighter here overall. Not to mention he is younger as well. And I do think he'll be able to use that wrestling to get some control time and just win the fight by decision. So with my pick, I'm going to say Elatang wins this one by a decision. Next fight we have is Norma Dumont versus Danielle Wolf. Dumont is 7-2. 31 years old, 5'7 with a 67 inch reach. And Wolf is 1 and 0, 39 years old, 5'11 with a 70 inch reach. All right, so women's MMA low level fight number two is upon us. And yeah, here we go. So Dumont is an okay striker. She's got okay wrestling and she does have a pretty decent clinch game, but she can be kind of low volume at times. And with Wolf, she's making her UFC debut and she's only had one pro fight in her career so far, which she won, which was in the Dana White Contender Series, which I believe was two years ago. But she's 39 years old and she only has one pro fight. So I don't know what to think of this fight. I think this is a weird one. I'm not sure why this is even going on on a pay-per-view. Uh, maybe because it's a feather in the featherweight division and there's only like six fighters on the roster for the women's featherweight division. But I'm going to go with Dumont here, even though I know she's not the greatest of fighters. And I just think with her experience, she should be able to win this fight. So with my pick, I'm going to say Dumont wins by a decision. Next fight we have is Jake Collier versus Chris Barnett. Collier is 13 and 7, 33 years old, 6'3 with a 78.5 inch reach. And Barnett is 22 and 8, 36 years old, 5'9 with a 75 inch reach. All right, so the people's main event is finally upon us here. So actually, this is going to be a pretty fun fight. And both these guys are pretty athletic for heavyweights. I know they don't look like it, but they are pretty athletic. If you actually go back and look at some pictures of Collier, he used to be a middleweight. And if you see the transformation from then till now, it's kind of funny. But both guys are mainly strikers. And Collier is going to be the bigger fighter here. He's going to have a 6-inch height advantage and a 4-inch reach advantage. So I think that's going to play a big part in this fight. I don't see Barnett winning this fight, unfortunately. I know he's a fan favorite ever since that spinning kick that he got the KO with. And I think Collier is going to win this one. I think he's the better fighter overall. He can take this fight to the mat if he wants to. He does have decent wrestling and grappling, as we've seen in his fight against Chase Sherman. So with my pick here, I'm going to say Collier wins this one. And I don't think it's going to be by a knockout or a finish, actually. I think it will go to decision here. Moving on up the card, we have Jamie Pickett versus Dennis Tululululian. Pickett is 13 and 7, 34 years old, 6'2 with an 80 inch reach. And Dennis is 10 and 6, 34 years old, 6'1 with a 77 inch reach. All right, so here we are. Another great fight that I cannot wait for. But both guys are mainly strikers. Pickett's going to have the longer reach advantage here. 
He does have decent power in his hands. He's not very technical, and he can be low volume, but he does have pretty decent wrestling that he can use here. And with Dennis, he's got okay striking, okay power. He is dangerous in the first round, but as the fight goes on, he does tend to fade a bit. And that's how I see this fight. I think Pickett will be able to survive the first round and should be able to outstrike Dennis throughout the rest of the fight to get a decision win here, especially if he can use that wrestling and take down Dennis because Dennis's takedown defense is awful. So with my pick, I'm going to say Pickett wins and he's going to win by a decision. Next fight we have is Jailton Almeida versus Anton Turkoli. Almeida is 16 and 2, 31 years old, 6'3 with a 79 inch reach. And Anton is 8 and 0, 26 years old, 6'4 with a 78 inch reach. So yeah, Anton is stepping up here for the UFC, making his UFC debut. He just fought on a Dana White contender series about three or four weeks ago, and he won by decision and didn't get a contract. But honestly, I watched that fight wasn't really that impressed and I'm I know why he didn't get a contract he's got okay striking he tried to use some flashy spinning elbows and back fists to try to get that knockout but he didn't land successfully he's got decent grappling but that's about it he's nothing special I think he's just filling in for the UFC just to get in and with Almeida we all know this guy he is an animal He's got very good striking, very good power in his hands, very good wrestling and grappling with good submissions. So this fight's going to be one-sided. It's going to be Almeida all day here. It just depends on how Almeida wants to finish this fight. Does he want to keep it on the feet and get a knockout? Does he want to use his wrestling and get a submission? Who knows? But with my pick, I'm going to say Almeida wins, and I'm going to say he's going to win by a ground and pound knockout. Next fight we have is Akeem Dawadu versus Julian Arosa. Dawadu is 13-2-1, 31 years old, 5-8 with a 72-inch reach. And Arosa is 27-9, 33 years old, 6-1 with a 74.5-inch reach. All right, so this is going to be a fun fight to watch. Dawadu is a very good striker, very technical, has very good leg kicks. He's got decent power in his hands with good cardio. He's not really a wrestler or grappler. He's going to want to keep this fight on the feet, but he does have pretty good takedown defense as well. And for Arosa, for me, I think he's more of a grappler. He does have okay striking, but Dawadu is going to have the way better striking. Arosa will have the better grappling and submissions, but he doesn't really have the greatest wrestling, so it's going to be hard for him to take down Dawadu, especially with his takedown defense. And for me, if Arosa cannot take this fight to the mat, I don't see how he wins this fight. I think Dawadu is going to be able to outstrike him pretty easily, maybe get a late round knockout because Arosa has been finished five times by knockout in his career. So it is a possibility. So with my pick here, though, I'm going to say Dawadu wins this one by a decision. Next fight we have is Johnny Walker versus Ian Kutalaba. Walker is 18 and 7, 30 years old, 6'6 with an 82 inch reach. And Kutalaba is 16, 7, and 1, 28 years old, 6, 1, with a 75-inch reach. All right, so this fight is going to be fun for however long it lasts. And do me a favor, when the face-offs go on for this fight, make sure you watch it because it's going to be very entertaining. Both these guys like to do a little show in their face-offs, so definitely go watch that. But Walker has good striking, he's got good power, and the only knock on him lately is his chin looks like it's just shot. But I will say he does have a massive height and reach advantage in this fight. So it's going to be hard for Kutalaba to land clean on his chin unless he's just super close. And with Kutalaba, he's got tons of power. He's not the most technical of strikers, but he's pretty decent. And he's got good takedowns, but he doesn't have the greatest top control when he does get those takedowns. So his opponents do get up really easily, and that gasses him out. So I don't know if he's going to want to use his wrestling here, because in his last couple fights that he used his wrestling, he gassed out in the first and second round. So this is a tough fight to predict. I'm going to roll the dice, and I'm going to give Walker one more shot here, and I'm going to say he wins this one. I just think... Him just being the taller and having the longer range here, I think that's going to give Kutalaba some issues. And if Kutalaba does want to go for takedowns, I think if Walker just survives that first round, 
I think he'll be able to get Kutalaba out of there maybe in the second or third. So with my pick here, I'm going to say Walker gets the upset here and gets a knockout. Moving on up the card, we have Irene Aldana versus Macy Chazon. Aldana is 13 and 6, 34 years old, 5'9 with a 68.5 inch reach. And Macy is 8 and 2, 31 years old, 5'11 with a 72 inch reach. Okay, so Aldana is a very good striker. She's got very good boxing, very quick strikes. She likes to push forward and she does have decent power in her hands. And with Macy, she's going to be the bigger fighter in this matchup. She does have okay striking. She is kind of slow with her strikes, though. And she does like to go to her wrestling when she does fade in the fight because her cardio is only about a round, a round and a half. So I think this is a pretty easy fight for Aldana here. She's going to be the way better striker, more technical striker. She should be able to outland Macy here. And if Macy does get tired and use her wrestling and try to keep her up against the cage like she did against Norma Dumont, I don't think Eldana will accept that. And I think she'll get off the cage and just go back to her striking. So I think this is an easy win for Eldana. So with my pick, I'm going to say she wins this one by a decision. Next fight we have is Kevin Holland versus Daniel Rodriguez. Holland is 23 and 7, 29 years old, 6'3 with an 81 inch reach. And Rodriguez is 16-2, 35 years old, 6'1", with a 74-inch reach. All right, so this fight I am very excited for. I like both guys as fighters. I think they're both fun to watch, but it's going to suck picking one of these, but that's what you got to do. So both guys are mainly strikers. They don't really use their wrestling that much, but Holland does have pretty decent grappling and submissions that we've seen in his last few fights. But Holland has good power. He's not the most technical of strikers, but he does have some unique striking. He does keep his range okay at times, and he's going to have a massive six-inch reach advantage, which that's going to play a big part in this fight, I think. And with Rodriguez, he is a very technical boxer. He's got very quick strikes. He's got a pretty decent chin, but he has been rocked a couple times, which kind of scares me because Holland does have power, like I said, and he's going to have that reach advantage too. And as I said, it was hard for me to pick one or the other, but i am got to go with Holland here. He just seems to always find a way to win, whether he looks really good in the first or he looks terrible in the first. He always seems to find a win, especially in the welterweight division. I'm not counting those middleweight fights that he did. He looked pretty bad, but Daniel Rodriguez isn't going to try to take down Holland. He's going to keep this fight standing, which that plays into Holland's game here. And I just think eventually he's going to be able to land that knockout shot against Daniel Rodriguez. So with my pick, I'm going to say Holland wins this one by a knockout. All right, co-main event time here. We have Lee Jing Liang versus Tony Ferguson. Lee is 19 and 7, 34 years old, 6 foot with a 72 inch reach. And Tony is 25 and 7, 38 years old, 5'11 with a 76.5 inch reach. All right, so this is going to be a crazy fight. And just so everybody knows, this is going to be a welterweight fight. Tony is moving up from lightweight to welterweight. So Lee is going to be the bigger fighter, but Tony does have a four and a half inch reach advantage. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. But Lee does have good striking. He's got very good power in his hands. He's not really much of a wrestler or grappler. So he's going to want to keep this fight standing and just box, use his boxing. And Tony is Tony. He's an unpredictable striker. He likes to use his elbows. He's got good grappling if it gets to the mat. He's not the greatest of wrestlers. They get the takedowns, and, and he doesn't really go for him too much. So I do think this fight's going to mainly play out on the feet. And if that's the case, unfortunately, I think Lee is going to win this one because Tony's going to have to outstrike him for three rounds because I don't think he's going to be able to knock him out. And I'm kind of worried for Tony too as well because he just got brutally knocked out with that kick to the face by Chandler about three months ago. And I don't know how his chin's going to hold up because Lee does have good power, like I said. So with my pick, I'm going to say Lee wins this one and I'm going to say he wins by knockout. Main event time here, we have Hamzat Chemaev versus Nate Diaz. Chemaev is 11 and 0, 28 years old, 6'2 with a 75 inch reach. And Diaz is 20 and 13, 37 years old, 6 foot with a 76 inch reach. 
Okay, so this is gonna be another crazy fight here. And honestly, not even sure why this fight's taking place other than maybe the UFC is just giving what Nate Diaz wants. He want, Nate Diaz wants to get out of his contract and do whatever he wants after that. So maybe the UFC is like, well, you want it, here you go, here's Chimaev. But we all know both these guys, Chimaev is a monster. He's got good striking with good power on the feet and he's got very good wrestling and submissions as well. And with Diaz, he's got good striking as well. He's more of a brawler type guy. He doesn't mind getting into wars as the fight goes on. He's always gonna be bleeding as the fight goes on as well. And he's got decent grappling when he's on his back so he can submit his opponents as well. So for me, I think Chimaev dominates here. I don't see how he loses this fight. Other than I will say, if this fight gets into the fourth round, we have no idea what Chimaev's gonna look like because in Chimaev's last fight, that was the first fight he ever went to three rounds. So this is a five round fight. Who knows what's gonna happen? Diaz has been in five round fights before. So we know that he can go all five rounds, but I think this fight's gonna not gonna last as long. I think Chimaev should be able to get Diaz out of there earlier than the in the fourth round. So with my pick here, I'm gonna say Chimaev wins this one and I'm gonna say he wins by a knockout. All right, guys, those are my picks and predictions for UFC 279. So let's jump into the only bet that I have so far for UFC 279. And the only bet that I have right now is a two-fighter parlay. I bet 1.25 units on Holland and Dawadu to win, and I got that at plus 109. So like I said with Holland, he's going to have the massive reach advantage. He's got tons of power in his hands, and I think eventually he should be able to land that knockout shot later in the fight. I'm going to say late second or third round. And with Dawadu, I think he's going to be the better fighter here. He's definitely going to be the better striker, and he's going to be able to outland Arosa on the feet. And I don't see Arosa being able to take down Dawadu. And if he can't do that, it should be Dawadu's fight all day, maybe late round finish or a decision win. All right, guys, those are my picks and predictions and bets so far for UFC 279. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And on your way out, please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't yet. Also, make sure to check back in the comment section of this video, or you can check my Instagram for any added bets that I place throughout the week. I hope everybody enjoys the fights this weekend, and until next time, happy fight night.